Hey guys, so today we want to talk about something called molecular geometry. So it's not quite like the geometry you're used to studying, but um, somewhat similar. So if you look at, I forget what page it is in the notes, but it's labeled note 6.5 molecular geometry, you see a big table that we're going to fill in throughout the course of this video. So in chemistry, all geometry refers to is the three-dimensional shape of a molecule. So in all the problems we do throughout the year and really throughout chemistry, you draw molecules as being flat. And because we draw on a piece of paper, so it's easy to represent them two-dimensionally. However, most molecules are three-dimensional. Okay? They have shapes, and the shapes are very specific to the number of atoms and electrons uh, present in that molecule. Okay? So there are many, many different shapes and geometries that occur in chemistry, but we're going to look at the ones that are by far the most common. Okay? So if I ask you to describe the shape or geometry of a molecule, the first thing you have to do is draw the proper Lewis structure. Okay? So if you don't draw the Lewis structure properly, it's really impossible to get the geometry correct. So before you watch this video, if you need to go back and refresh on Lewis structures, I'll feel free to do that. Okay? So if we were in class, we would look at these using little hand models where we can build the atoms, but we don't have that luxury this year. So we're going to use this computer simulation, and I will post the link. So if you want to go and look at it yourself, you can. Okay? So I'll select the model. And I'll remove everything. So this purple atom will be our central atom. Okay, so whatever we drew is the central atom in the Lewis structure. Okay? So if we work our way down the chart, the first row on the chart is a linear geometry. Okay? So linear would just be two atoms in a straight line. Okay? So there are two linear options on the paper. Let's look at the first one first. So the first linear option the number of atoms attached to the central atom would be one. Okay, so I have one atom attached to my central purple atom. So that gives me two total atoms. And the number of lone pairs on the central atom doesn't matter. Okay, so I can add as many lone pairs as I want. Okay, and the geometry doesn't change. It's still linear. Okay, if you have two atoms, there's no way to arrange the atoms so that they aren't in a straight line. Okay, they have to be in a straight line if there are only two atoms. So I'll check that box in here so you can see it's not linear. Okay, so this is the only case where the number of lone pairs on the central atom does not matter. If you ever have a molecule that's only two atoms, you know the shape or geometry has to be linear. Okay? So the example of the first type of linear geometry would be HCl. Okay? So if you want to take a second and pause the video, draw the Lewis structure for HCl and make sure it makes sense. Okay. So the next linear geometry that we have, the geometry is still the exact same. The molecule is going to look the same. It's going to be in a straight line, but it's going to be produced in a slightly different way. Okay. For the second classification of linear shape, we will have two atoms attached to the central atom. Okay. So here I have my central atom with two atoms attached and I have a total of three atoms, okay? So in order for this to be linear, you have to have zero lone pairs on the central atom, okay? So the combination of two atoms attached to the central atom, three atoms total, zero lone pairs on the central atom gives us a linear geometry. Notice it says lone pairs on the central atom. There can be lone pairs on the non-central atom that won't affect the geometry, okay? So I could also use double bonds here, okay? and it's still linear. So the example of this type of linear molecule would be CO2, carbon dioxide. So go ahead and pause the video, draw out the Lewis structure, you'll see it looks like this. Notice there will be lone pairs on the non-central atom, but that won't affect the geometry. So confirm that this matches the geometry you expect it to. Okay, the next type of geometry we have, we call trigonal planar. Okay, so think about what those words mean. Trigonal kind of sounds like triangle. Planar means flat. Okay, so that's what it looks like. It's a flat triangular type structure. So in order to have a trigonal planar shape or geometry, you have to have three atoms attached to the central atom. Okay, so for a total of four atoms and there cannot be any lone pairs of electrons on the central atom. Okay, so there's to be zero lone pairs on the purple central atom. You can have lone pairs out here, okay, that doesn't matter, but on the central atom it must be zero. 
So if you look at it, it's triangular. And if I turn it over, it is flat. Okay, so trigonal planar. And the example here is BH3, one boron, three hydrogens. So pause the video, draw the Lewis structure, make sure it makes sense based on what I'm saying here. Okay, so just to kind of go in a logical order, let's skip down the chart to trigonal pyramidal next. Okay, so we'll come back to the ones I skipped. Let's look at trigonal pyramidal. Okay, so to have a trigonal pyramidal or trigonal uh, pyramidal, people say it differently, shape, you need to have the same thing here. Okay, you have three atoms attached to the central atom. Okay, you have four total atoms, but we're going to add a single lone pair of electrons. So let's look at what happens when I add the lone pair. Okay, so the molecule goes from being flat to being slightly pyramid shaped. Okay? So this lone pair is repelling okay, the other electrons. So it's causing the molecule to spread out and inherit a different shape. Okay? So I'll take them away. So hopefully you can see the difference in trigonal pyramidal and trigonal planar. Okay? So the example of a trigonal pyramidal molecule would be NH3. Okay? So pause the video, draw the Lewis structure for NH3. You'll see it looks like this, and it will inherit a trigonal pyramidal geometry. Okay, so now we can go back up where we left off for tetrahedral. Okay, a tetrahedral molecule has four atoms attached to the central atom for a total of five atoms, and there are zero lone pairs on the central atom. Okay, it looks kind of like this. An example of this type of molecule would be CH4. Okay, so you can pause the video, draw out the Lewis structure for CH4, and hopefully you will see that it has a geometry that we refer to as tetrahedral. Okay? So the next option, or the next uh, geometry we'll look at, we call octahedral. Okay? So very similar to tetrahedral. Uh, is the, hold on one second. Let me pause. <laughs> okay, so hopefully uh, I'm back recording now. I apologize. It's allergy season and I had to sneeze. So octahedral, I think is where I left off. So octahedral atoms will have six atoms attached to the central atom. Okay, so you will have a total of seven atoms and you will have zero lone pairs on the central atom. Okay, it looks kind of like this three-dimensionally. An example of this is SF6, so sulfur hexafluoride. One sulfur, six fluorines. So pause the video, draw out the Lewis structure, and you'll see that the fluorines have lone pairs, okay, but the central atom does not. We only care about the lone pairs on the central atom. So the next row is trigonal pyramidal. We already discussed that. So then the last two okay, are bent. So let's look at the first uh, configuration of atoms that we refer to as a bent shape or a bent geometry. Okay? So our first option would be to have two atoms attached to the central atom for a total of three atoms. And I just use double bonds here simply because the example I'm going to give uh, has double bonds. That really doesn't affect uh, the geometry that much. We only look at the number of atoms attached and the number of lone pairs, not necessarily how they're attached. Okay? So we have two atoms attached to the central atom for a total of three atoms, and I add one lone pair of electrons. So you can see, rather than being linear, it inherits a bent shape. Okay? So the example here would be SO2. Okay, so you can pause the video, draw SO2, and you'll see it looks very similar to this. So the other option for a bent geometry would be to have two atoms attached to the central atom for a total of three atoms. So in this configuration, it is linear. If I add one lone pair of electrons, we already have that example, it is bent. If I add another lone pair of electrons, we still have a bent geometry. Okay, so two lone pairs of electrons will also give you a bent geometry. The example here is H2O, water. Okay, so we're pretty familiar with this molecule. 
So pause the video, draw it out, and make sure that geometry makes sense based on what we know here. Okay, so that, uh, that excuse me, you have one, two, three, four, five, six different geometries. Again, there are many, many more in chemistry, but these are by far the most common, so these are the ones that we're going to stick with. So you need to be able to identify the geometry of a molecule after you draw its Lewis structure. Okay? So again, in order to do that, you'll go back and first look at the number of atoms attached to the central atom, then the number of lone pairs of electrons on the central atom. Okay? So below the table, you have some molecules, PCL3, H2S, HBr, CCL4, HCN, and OF2. Okay, so what you need to do is stop the video, draw out the Lewis structures for each of those, because you have to draw the Lewis structure first before you can predict geometry, then go back and assign each geometry based on the Lewis structure. Okay, so stop the video now, do that. When you come back, I'll give you the answers for those. Okay, okay so hopefully you got those taken care of. So we'll start with PCL3. PCL3 has a geometry that is trigonal pyramidal. Okay, so the shape is trigonal pyramidal. H2S has a bent shape. HBr has a linear shape. CCL4 has a tetrahedral shape. HCN is linear. And OF2 is bent. Okay, So hopefully you got those right. Uh, if you have any issues or questions, feel free to send me an email. And then in the next video, we will come back and look at the very bottom of the page where it talks about rules for molecule polarity. Okay? Hope you have a good day.